Like sands through the hourglass, so is the speed of internet service in rural America. These experiences are compiled through millions of true stories in small towns. And it's educational. Hey, Gary, I'm over here. Hey, Emily, how's it going? Good, good. I got you coffee, black. Oh, you remembered. Of course. I know you don't go for anything fancy. I'll stick with black coffee, thanks. Never been here before. I don't make it to Sizable City too often. What's this place called? Mugshots? Yeah. I've been coming to this cafe ever since I realized that I wouldn't be able to work from home. It's pretty inconvenient having to drive to the next town to get good internet access. But the library in Villageville isn't open every day. My clients don't want me on a part-time basis. Yeah, I guess they probably have cable and internet and bullet trains here in Sizable City. They have a municipal network. They've had it for years. Oh, yeah? Yep. I spoke with the head of the utility about it. Everyone I've talked to here loves their network. They told me how they had practically begged CenturyLink to update the network here, but at the time, Sizable City wasn't a whole lot larger than Villageville. CenturyLink told them the same thing they keep telling us. Someday we may get around to it. Huh, that's a shock. I know, right? Well, they were also looking for ways to cut their city telecom budget, and I guess the connections to the municipal buildings were just crap. Going out all the time. Are you guys doing all right? Uh, is there anything I can get for you here, aside from that coffee you got? We're doing fine, son. You're clinking those things right in my ear. I can't hear what we're talking about. Okay, let, let me know if you need anything. I don't need any more coffee. I'll be up all night. So the city council asked the electric department to look into how much it would cost to start building an iNet. iNet? You net? I just want internet. Yeah, no kidding. When they did the math, it didn't take them long to pay for it, and they ended up saving enough money to slowly expand the network. Hmm... Next, they were serving businesses, and now every premise in town has fiber to the home. I bet that's why they got so many more businesses and why jobs are there instead of Villageville. Yeah, that's part of it. They haven't spread out to places like Villageville. It costs more to get from address to address, so the upfront cost is higher. But we have that electric co-op, and the economics of fiber aren't very different from electricity. I mean, we could try to make the municipal network work... But the co-op seems a better solution for us. I like to be a part of it and do things. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're great at that, Gary. Sizable City could also use the money from business connections to help fund residential deployment. And they had their own electric utility. Huge advantage. Right, so what time is that co-op guy supposed to be here? He should be here any minute. Emily, Gary, I'm Natasha from the People's Power Cooperative. Hey, great to meet you. Yeah, hi, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's great to meet both of you. I've never been to this coffee shop before. I don't make it into a sizable city much. I've been making the drive from Villageville quite often in the past few weeks. I can't get high-quality internet access at my house, so I've become an expert on all the free high-speed connections here in the 50-mile radius around. I understand. That's why you wanted to meet with someone from the co-op board. That's right. When I lived in North Dakota, we got internet from the telephone cooperative. They had fiber in everyone's home. We've been doing some research in town, and we found out that electric cooperatives are offering high-speed internet access now, too. It makes sense, really. We already have a good deal of the infrastructure in place because most of us deployed fiber years ago. I suppose you already have the people to install and maintain fiber, too. Well, electric co-ops need trucks and crews to handle maintenance, and many of those employees can then be trained in the skills for internet infrastructure. It isn't a huge leap. Yeah, then maybe my kids will move back here when there's finally jobs in Villageville. The telephone cooperative is so much better at customer service, and I actually got what I paid for. Since I was a member, I also got to vote on who was on the board, and I got to look in all their stuff and figure out who they were. It was great. I'm super nosy. That's the way the Electro Co-op operates, too. We want members to vote and let us know what you want. You, You own a small share of the network. I wish it were that easy to get rid of the executives at CenturyLink. (laughs) Ha, no kidding. Look, I know how bad their service is, but should we really blame them? I mean, they are focused on making a profit. Whoever thought it should be up to them to build rural infrastructure? I mean, I'm just an old fart who lives here, but I blame them. Well, the money that the co-op members spend on internet access, electricity, or phone service stays in our community. The money you spend on your CenturyLink service goes to CenturyLink shareholders. So, we're wondering what we can do to get you guys, uh, people's power, yeah, to build a broadband network for us. Actually, Gary, we've already started planning to deploy fiber. We need to find a place to start with the pilot project to see how well it's received and to work out any issues. If it goes well, we'll likely expand throughout our service area. Well, I'm glad you're thorough. 
That's right, a pilot project. To a limited area of businesses and residents first to see if there's enough interest. If people like the service, and if we're able to make the project work financially, if it comes out well, we'll consider expanding it to a larger area. Like the rest of the county, you mean? Exactly, yes. All right, so we'll all have fiber and the economy will get better. Eventually, we'll use fixed wireless in some places to get people internet access immediately. Wireless is cost-effective in the short term, but the economics of fiber are better over the long term. We'll use both, but we think we can get fiber out to everyone. Hmm, why is the fiber cheaper? Fiber is expensive up front, but you don't have to keep messing with it. Wireless technologies, they change frequently and they need a lot more maintenance. Natasha, what do we do to support the People's Power Project? Call our office and let us know that you want us to offer internet service. Also, you should come to the next member meeting and express your support. Get in touch with your neighbors and tell them to do the same. The meeting is next month. Great. Well, we'll be there, won't we, Gary? You betcha. For sure, I ain't got nothing going on. Like other small rural communities, Villageville's best chances of getting high-quality internet access rests with their electric cooperative. As People's Power pursues the pilot project, residents and businesses race to sign up. Demand is high. Soon after, People's Power considers expanding the pilot to include their entire service area. And Villageville's residents and businesses finally have the connections they need.